The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome back to another Wheat School. I'm Jeremy Boyshin. I'm the Agronomy Research Extension Manager with the Alberta Wheat and Alberta Barley Commissions. And we are here to talk to you today about maximizing wheat potential. So Western Canada is a large area with a lot of factors impacting yield potential. But there's a few things that we can focus on to maximize the yield potential on your farm. And one of the first things you want to think about is selecting a variety that is going to be best suited for your growing conditions and your management practices and your pressure profile. And what do I mean by pressure profile? What diseases you're dealing with? Are you dealing with lodging? Are you dealing with insects? And what market are you trying to sell into? And when you're looking for a new variety, making sure that the variety you're selecting is taking best advantage of the growing season that you have while managing all of these these pressures that that crop is going to deal with. So there's always new varieties coming to market, so making sure you're aware of those new varieties and continuing to try and select a variety that's best suited for your growing conditions. The next things we, thing we wanna think about is making sure that we get a soil test done. Getting a soil test gives us a platform to make smart decisions with our fertilizer to utilize it in an efficient way with a 4-hour nutrient stewardship system of the right source, the right rate, the right place, and the right time, and making sure that we're putting on the correct amount of fertilizer to get the most out of that ground, out of that field, and maximize our yield potential. Now, if you're in an area of high variability, you may want to look at something like variable rate technology to be putting the right fertilizer in the right place across the field. Um, so that's something to investigate if you have high variability and you want to still maximize that, that yield potential on the fertility side. The next thing you want to think about is really those best management practices when it comes to seeding. And, and really this starts in the fall. When harvesting the previous crop, making sure that you're distributing that straw and chaff evenly across the field, because if it has poor distribution behind your combine, it's going to affect variability of moisture, germination, and seeding quality across that field, which is going to cause variable emergence, variable crop staging, and it's going to impact the ability to cro of that crop to make the most out of the inputs you're putting in the ground. So you really want to make sure that you're dealing with soil conditions and residue conditions that are going to maximize emergence so we can build good yield potential. Beyond that, once we get into spring, we want to think about a few things. We want to think about our seeding date, our seeding rate, um, and we really want to be thinking about narrowing those two in to make sure we're making the most out of the growing conditions we're working with. So seeding date, we know based on research from Brian Barris that with spring wheat, the best time to be seeding for maximum yield potential and maintaining um, yield consistency, we want to be targeting that two to six degrees soil temperature at five centimeters depth. So they're taking that measurement midday and seeding if that soil temperature at five centimeters depth is in that two to six degrees soil temperature, that's where we're going to be able to maximize the yield potential of that wheat. Seeding rate, we really want to be looking at, okay, what is best for the growing conditions I'm working with. Generally what we see is with higher seeding rates we're targeting higher yield potential and higher yield stability. Um, so based on the, uh, the class you're growing and the growing conditions you're working with, if you're in a higher moisture area you may want to bump those seeding rates up. 350 seeds per meter squared, maybe even a little bit higher, but if you're in drier conditions uh, there just might be a little bit too much competition for those resources so it may not be as high of a rate maybe in that 300 seeds per meter squared or a little bit higher. So targeting good seeding rates and then also working with high quality seeds. So getting your seed tested. What are you working with? Is it good germination, good vigor? Are you dealing with any diseases? Should you be treating that seed to protect it? Again, to make sure there's consistent emergence of that crop across the field. Because the more consistent we are with emergence, the better we are going to be, we're going to end up with main head tillers maximizing that yield potential. We want a lot of main head tillers and less secondary tillers tillers and even mature or even germination is going to help build that even crop and uh, the majority of the yield coming from main head tillers <clears throat> 
The other thing that we need to think about uh, is seating depth. And seating depth is gonna vary depending on the environmental conditions, again, that you're working with. If you're in a higher moisture spring, where maybe you're not worried as much about moisture, going in that 2.5 centimeter depth for seating is gonna give you good emergence, establish things quickly. But if you're in drier conditions, you could move a little bit deeper, um, but the danger of getting too deep to uh, target moisture is then maybe we get into this variable emergence again. Um, because we're getting into moisture in some conditions, but in other areas, maybe on hilltops, it's a little bit drier uh, and we don't get that germination as quickly. And again, then we see a variable emergence due to variable germ uh, germination. So in those drier conditions, sometimes it's better to seed a little bit shallow um, and get that rain to come a little bit later and cause even germination. Above and beyond that, now that we've set our yield potential by implementing all of these practices, our next steps are going to be to protect that yield potential. Making sure we're scouting for weeds early and managing those early um, if you're not managing them before you put the seed in the ground um, and making sure you're scouting for disease and managing that properly as well as insects. So if you focus on these main practices um, and, and tailor them for your specific growing conditions, that is how you're gonna maximize your yield potential and make the most of the crop you're growing.